we meet again. All right. Uh, this time, uh, I want to touch about the third enrichment for this topic. Uh, now we want to discuss about the facing materials. Okay. The question is for this discussion. Okay. Uh, the important properties that should be considered in fabricating facing material. Okay. In bracket face face brick. Okay. I want to remind to you, please take note this topic seriously. Okay, this section especially. The important properties that should be considered in fabricating facing material because uh, this is a very popular question. And this one, uh, independent question, okay, for facing, facing materials. Okay, now we want to discuss about uh, the important property that should be considered in fabricating face brick. Okay, actually for this discussion, uh, I wrote a lot of lecture uh, notes for in my lecture notes. Okay, so you can refer into my lecture notes uh, about this topic. Okay, about this topic, about this section. Okay, so now we want to discuss about the important properties for face brick or facing facing material okay here is the example of face bricks okay number one uh, what uh, the important properties that you should consider in fabricating face brick number one is color okay warna okay as you can see uh, when you maybe you pernah nampak at the construction site okay there's there is a various color of uh, face bricks okay some of them uh, red velvet okay some of them is uh, mild red some of them is gray but i couldn't see it and, and, uh, and some of them something like brown brownish color okay how how we want to make these different colors okay maybe in in my lecture notes you can see i explain when you when you use the dif difference ions for example when you use a ferrum oxide okay maybe ferrum contain uh, f2 fe2 plus and also fe3 plus give you different colors okay when you change these uh, ions so they will give you different colors okay again this color we determine we get this color uh, due to uh, when you prepare the raw material okay let's say for example i give to you let's say you mix a uh, ferrum oxide okay plus with other component in uh, in face brick formulation and then you mill it and then you mix and mill okay first you mix the raw material you are uh, containing ferrum oxide inside and then you mix and then you mill and then you spray dryer and then you try to ex do the extrusion process to get the face brick okay before you fire it okay the color is still same okay but the color will be changed after you fire the, the products so in this case in order to get different color of uh, face brick products okay it go back to the formula that you use okay the formulation that you use okay so means that this color is affect by the raw material that you that you choose okay number two is the texture okay texture i think i quite explained along about it okay the texture how you make the texture pleasant okay the uh, interesting and and you know expensive okay so for this texture you can use many kind of technique extrusion molding pressing uh, manually by hand and, and and others okay but of course when you produce in such huge volume of face brick you need automated system uh, in order to produce the texture because the texture uh, kenapa texture ni penting dalam face brick okay imagine okay i give you very simple example uh, let's say uh, you put two flat mirror okay two flat mirror together contact each other and then you put water between the surface of the mirror what happened the mirror is easy to glide right to slide on the surface but let's say if you use uh, grind paper uh, yeah grind paper okay grind paper like silica carbide okay have the surface different rough surface okay different rough surface and then you put 
you contact the surface of the grind pepper together and then you try to put the water and what happened if you slide the pepper it couldn't slide right because due to the texture same also in the face brick the texture is very important in order to to uh, when you build the building okay you want to stack the bricks right so when you stack the brick you put cement the, the same is something like the intermediate media in order to hold between each brick so that's a simple analogy i want to give to you okay number three is the coating okay why uh, in face brick coating is very important because the coating is want to protect the surface because uh kenapa protect the surface kalau kamu perasan uh, kalau kamu tengok the old ancient building okay uh, macam mana saya nak bagi contoh pernah tengok uh, kota Ifamosa di Melaka ok kota Ifamosa di Bandar Hilir dia warna merah kan tembok dia tapi over the time dia akan you know dia akan jadi macam kelopak garam on the surface ok we call as a efflorescence dekat sini saya tertulis efflorescence ok that's why kita perlukan coating in order to protect ok the surface kalau ada tompok-tompok pada permukaan Facebook tak cantik lah ok, you punya rumah so that's why uh, kalau kamu tengok rumah-rumah di uh, macam mana bagi contoh uh, ok, dia Belanda lah again, saya bagi rumah di Belanda kebanyakan rumah di Belanda, dia pakai face brick kalau kamu tengok face, face brick dia warna merah ok, actually that face brick, dia do the coating process on it ok, ceramic coating on ceramic ok, that's a beauty Ceramic coating on ceramic. Okay, that's more advanced technology. Okay, number four is the durability. Okay, I think I explained in the my first enrichment session. Okay, about the durability. But again, uh, durability is depend on the subject of application. Subject to application. Okay, for example, uh, if you want to use as a wall, so you must know the durability of the face brick. Okay, contoh lah. Kalau kamu nak guna, kalau kamu nak buat jambatan, okay, takkan kamu nak pakai face brick yang murah. Sebab, if you use the cheap face brick, okay, dia akan give you high risk collapse, uh, you know, uh, kalau bila hujan banjir sebagainya, dia tak cukup kuat. So, dalam case ni, durability is subject, but when you use the face brick, you must understand its durability, okay. Its durability means I can absorb Uh, certain compressive load okay uh, that's why when reflect to the compressive load is reflect about the fireboard formation and also reflect about the uh, firing temperature okay number five is efflorescent okay efflorescent dengan kata mudah adalah you know the white spot on the bricks itself after you expose to the humidity and hot temperature for long times ok this one biasa berlaku ok kalau kamu tengok di uh, mungkin ada gambar kita tak ada gambar mungkin saya tunjukkan uh, di mana ya ok tak apa nanti kamu tengok alright efflorescent ni bermaksud macam ada kelopak putih pada permukaan kenapa uh, maybe due to the uh, due to the raining sebab raining contain uh, you know certain salt garam Okay, when when this garam, dia berkumpul pada surface permukaan bricks. Uh, so, dia ten, tendensi dia untuk men, uh, menjadi kelopak putih tu lebih tinggi. Okay, so that's why uh, efflorescent effect ni, uh, dia bukan fluorescent, eh, efflorescent. Okay, efflorescent effect ni, uh, dia lebih uh, mudah berlaku jika kita pasang face brick ni di luar rumah. Okay, di luar kawasan terbuka. Okay, dalam rumah mungkin agak sukar berlaku efflorescent ni tapi bila di rumah sebab mudah berlaku sebab terdudah dengan hujan, panas dan sebagainya. And then the next is the moisture expansion. This is really really important. When we talk about the moisture expansion, of course it's related with the heat. Okay, for example, uh, kenapa moisture expansion ni penting? Uh, Okey, kita cuma contoh. Okey. Uh, kamu pernah tengok kan uh, dalam engine turbine. Okey, dalam engine turbine. Im imagine you pakai kipas tu made from ceramic. Okey, and then you want to install inside the motor plug. 
of the fan okey what happens sebab bila dalam aircraft engine bila dekat atas udara suhu dia sangat tinggi bila dia nak start untuk ram okey bila dia suhu tinggi imagine kalau benda tu dia expand what happen dia akan terkeluar betul alright so same also with the face brake okey for example kalau face brake ni bila kamu expose pada suhu tinggi Okay, expose pada suhu tinggi uh, Pada suhu Di luar macam 34 tu biasa Tapi bila kamu guna face brake dalam Macam mana? Sebab tu dalam Okay, saya ambil contoh mudah uh, Mungkin kamu tak pernah rasa Okay, tapi mungkin kamu pernah tengok di TV Okay, macam mana orang build The traditional stove Okay, untuk memasak Okay, dia, dia, uh, dia orang akan susun face brake tu Okay And then dia letak kuali dan masak Okay, bila masak, suhu tu tinggi. Okay, what happen kalau face brake tu expand? Okay, bila expand, uh, dia akan moving lah benda tu. Bila moving, suddenly kuali tu akan jatuh. Okay, so that's why in face brake, the moisture uh, expansion is, is crucial. But normally the moisture expansion is very small. But it again is subject to application. Okay, kalau contoh kamu letak face brake ni dalam uh, oven yang boleh bakar pada 1400 ataupun 1500, definitely you must check its moisture expansion. Okay, again when we talk about the moisture expansion, dia akan relate dengan size tolerance and chipping. Okay, chipping ni very subjective bagi saya. Sebab chipping ni dia macam serpihan Okay, serpihan ni mungkin berlaku waktu transport Bila you beli daripada kedai, you bawa naik lori Okay, dia lalu daripada contoh Kalau mau beli daripada KL, nak pasang di Penang Lalu highway sebagainya, bumper sebagainya Bila dia melompat, face brake tu akan um, bertembung Dan akan menghasilkan serpihan Okay, bagi saya it's very subjective But the size tolerance must be there Kenapa size tolerance? Size tolerance ni adalah bila selepas kamu bakar. Contoh, saya ambil. Kamu ada bakar let's say 100 piece of face brick. Bila kamu bawa keluar, setengah dia kecil, setengah dia besar. Kenapa? Ha, tu sangat kritikal sebab bila size dia berbeza, okay, um, sebab bila you as a manufacturer in factories, you must control their quality control. Okay, so... That's for the, the size tolerance is very important. Dia bukan nak ukur satu-satu. Tapi by physical observation, you can see. Okay. And one thing is that uh, the size tolerance also is very important bila you install at site. Contoh kalau you pak, beli, you guna buat rumah, kalau you dapat face brick yang berbeza saiznya, so banyaklah amount, numbers of face brick yang kamu perlukan. Jadi, dalam kes ni, size tolerance adalah sangat penting. Okay. I think... Uh, that's all for this topic. Okay. If you have any question, uh, again, please post to my Padlet. Inshallah, I will try to answer your question. Okay. Back to this. Okay. The detailed explanation I already put in my lecture notes. So, please, re uh, when you learn this, please refer to my lecture notes. If, if you don't understand, uh, please ask me directly. Okay. Thank you. Then, Happy learning. Assalamualaikum.